Okay, Carlo Wine here. The wine engines. I've been a, I've been neglecting doing a video or getting videos taken while I'm working on the C3 Corvette with the LT1. Uh, what my job was as a refresher, first of all, make sure the cooling system was up to snuff. Uh, the fans, the owner um, mentioned that it was just seemed to be hot. That um, it really the the system didn't vent well. Uh, and I don't blame the previous owner, you know, because in the past I've cobbled together things thinking it was right and and it wasn't. So th this is a combination of a 82 C3 and a LT1. The LT1 cooling system's a bit different, not a lot different. Uh, and then neaten the wiring up, um, do a discovery if there's other things and go from there. So I needed neatened up the wiring and I also did heat shielding to minimize like the, the radiation heat from the headers to the passenger compartment. Uh, what I ended up having to do is put an expansion tank in. And it, because you couldn't see how, how the hose dips and it really was very difficult to do a venting because the radiator is here higher than the filler neck. Well, now the expansion tank is the highest point. That made it a world of difference and much easier to uh, to vent. So the cooling system is working fine. There's only one thing, as in the computer, whoever wired it before did not wire up the two outputs for fan one, fan two from the computer to, to go to a relay and to turn the fans on. They decided to, to use an aftermarket system that's self-powered, independent, and it has a probe that's stuck in the radiator at the bottom. So that's independent. So let's say the engine computer is going to see water pump temperature and it's going to indicate actual engine temperature. And uh, let's say it's running at 175, 180. Well, let's say there, there's uh, some kind of future problem where there is an air uh, bubble or, you know, and, and it's not flowing good through the radiator. That's not going to know that, you know, it's going to be stagnant here. Or if it's really cold out, that system there is going to come on at its program time. But it's not going to know that the engine needs the fan to come on. There, So in the future, maybe it'd be good to wire, find the, the two outputs, wire it to relays, and make them independent of this fan thermostat. Uh, so I fixed oil leaks, hopefully. I put gaskets on the valve covers. Haven't tested it yet. Neatened up the wiring a lot. Okay, so right here it was, it was you know backyard engineered. It wasn't broken, but I neatened these up. So this is put on afterwards, I do believe. But when you turn key, this will be a key accessory. It'll be active, and so it helps in their wiring setup that I didn't spend years. Uh, knowing exactly where every wire was and what the source is because they have they have a lot of fuse fuses and stuff back here where the battery is it's working I'm, i wasn't going to deal with it because then that would add hours and an extra time when it's working now it, you know working now then let's live with it i improved this this wire here it just looked bad to me it was <laughs> um this is the the key on to the fan to that fan relay, and that fan relay has a positive power. Okay, so there was a big blob of wires over here and they all look kind of burned. The insulation was dark and all. Okay, so it that bundle was to air conditioner and the air conditioner was has been totally bypassed. I pretty much tried to make a six, six plugs here of all the spare wires. This is for the future troubleshooting. Right here, these wires power the EFI system, you know, they go in and they probably go right into the into the car, either under dash to power the under dash for factory, or they go back to the, um, or they go back to behind the seat where the PCM is, the LT1 PCM, and a few fuses. But this was unfused here. It, it, this took, got its power. Instead of from the battery, it got it straight from the starter post. So... This leads me to believe this may just be powering stock internal 
But anyway, what I did was made a short post to minimize risk and it's fuse, 30 amp and a 30 amp. This is going, this side is going to the fan controller. All right, so, and we have an expansion tank. It was very, it took me hours and hours to figure out where to put it and how to get it mounted and how to get it mounted with the distributor in the way, I mean, uh, the coil. So for now, this is what I got. I think it works pretty good. It's a real good quality from Summit. It's Summit branded. It's thick aluminum and it's got a billet cap. And I have this set up. This could be set up a variety of ways where you could have the steam line coming in here, but this steam line is set up fine for like a, a stock Corvette. The problem was that there was no expansion tank because because the heater lines are bypassed. There's no heater right now, heater lines. So in a Corvette, so let's say if this is a 94 Corvette engine, the heater line, the top return would have a T and it would go to the stock expansion tank, which would be sitting here. Then that stock expansion tank would have the, say, call it the radiator cap to go at 18 PSI and that would go to, to the overflow. This pretty much incorporated the stock. It didn't have any expansion tank. It just has the uh, relief right here going to the overflow. The cap was uh, leaking, so I put a new cap on, and it's not leaking anymore. And so this expansion tank goes to if there to the return heater line right there. The other one on this is capped. So in the future, this could have the two heater lines going to the heater, uh, uh, and the input is underneath up and under, and then it could be teed to go to the expansion tank here in the future. Uh, fix the, well, hopefully fixed. I have a new gasket. It's a rubber gasket on, on this. And heat treat, I mean heat wrap, and down below. And when I was filling the transmission back up, because I was working on the throttle, the throttle cable for the transmission, I immediately spilled a little bit here and it went straight down, thankfully, onto the metal sheathing that I have and it didn't soak into the wrap. So I have heat wrap. Um, this had previously had aluminum foil there because it's two open holes there. I don't know it, uh, uh, you know, it's just open. And so there's a more robust cap right there. Uh, well, and that's pretty much it. So I don't know if I have the throttle, the TV cable for the modulator for the transmission so that it can kick down, but I think I freed it up. And because previously, if you made it tight like it should be and, and have full apply on that modulator, it, it would stop about right there. But now I can go full throttle and I may have freed it up. I may have just by luck, by messing with it down there at the transmission and putting the linkage in, maybe the linkage was in wrong, I don't know. We'll see, I'm gonna give it a test drive. This is a, such a good looking car and I really appreciate Corvettes because they really are easy to work in with the hood opening like this. Carl Lowen, stick with me.
residual transmission fluid from when I, where I spilled. When I filled, we'll keep an eye on that. There are no valve cover leaks, but it hasn't been run hard yet. You can see way up there, um, and that panel, I had to poke a hole through that panel, but that's two big holes where one wire comes through. Uh, I don't know what was there. I should study up on the Corvette, the C3 Corvette. But I'm hoping that, that this wrap here, the outer foil, will uh, work well. I'm hoping. And if it gets too brittle and it just kind of comes off, I'll, I'll get tie wraps. Put new gaskets here. And here. You see how this really nice flange. Super sturdy. Stainless steel, then it necks down a little bit, but then it's real low right here, and that will that gets the center of grab of driveways, the hump. So it needs to be tucked up in there somehow. With a nice exhaust shop, could probably tuck that. Uh, for the owner, there is one oil leak, which is probably the major oil leak. It's probably from the water pump shaft up above. I don't think it's coming from the crank seal. It just drips down from the water pump shaft uh, and you know and um, it may be plugged but it may not be plugged um, think because I think it comes from above the seal here unless it's coming from the crank seal that'd be a future job to fix that front leak because that's going to be making a film but it's going to keep it from rusting all right Okay, doing a little test drive with the 82 C3 Corvette and the LT1. It, it, it's a nice day, nice and cool out, so it doesn't really tax the engine. But it, it goes to 177 or 180 at the highest. So it's maintaining temperature, it runs fine, it doesn't overheat. The actual dash gauge shows engine coolant temp or radiator tap, and it doesn't show oil tap. So that's not hooked up. That's the only part that's not hooked up for the interior. Let's see if I give it throttle, will it drop down? Oh, I guess you gotta, it doesn't, it doesn't unlock the converter. So I guess you gotta drop the uh, transmitting, the stick and the manual three. Okay, on the cable, uh, the 93 cable, that's max pull. It plungers all the way in, and I can release, and the plunger goes out. And there's more slack, you know. So I can, like, pull on the cable and feel just the, that feel right there. I can feel it touch and bottom out. And then max pull takes the plunger all the way in. So all I have to do is figure out... a. Uh, a latching mechanism up at the throttle because I'll show you how. Okay, so from down there, you here's the throttle cable. It's just in there. It, this isn't built uh, truly for this type. It's built for that type right there to go through the big, this bottom part, but it can be tie wrapped in there, interfaced. So this cable is here and if you listen, you can hear where it bottoms out there, it touches the plunger. Right there, it would touch the plunger. And here would be full pull. All right. But it's this type of connection compared to this type of connection. So I'm going to probably have to, you know, sort of like probably cut that, put this on there. And because that goes onto this bar here. 
And hopefully that will solve it. But I'm worried about the plunger going too far or the, the fulcrum point on this going too far. Let's see, back it up. Going actually too far and where this can't do the full throttle. So, working on that. Okay, right now it's cobbled together, this. I have it tie wrapped right here at this, a little bit modified bracket, because it ex extends out a little further. And that is in order to give me the right slack on this. And then I tie wrapped this and looped it around, and it does the full throttle pull all the way. So I'm gonna give it a test drive. spark plug change and the spark plugs don't look did not look real good they look rich all of them and all new spark plugs all right so far it's so good by feel but how am I gonna tell if it's if there's a miss well I'm gonna look at the data I'm looking for fueling if it if it tries to fuel if it says it wants fuel once it goes into closed loop then that's a bad sign all right, left bank, 158. Okay, these are the block learns. Not too bad. Uh, one left, 130, right, 121. Right is thinking it's a little rich left thinks it's a little lean. That's not too bad. And there's there's O2 sensor. So at initial startup, they split, but then, then it got warmed up and they were rich and then they started cycling and, and are doing well. So it's running good now. It was just spark plugs, thankfully. 